Good morning. Welcome to First Church Family and Friends Day. My name is Patrice Hall and thank you for joining us today. Before we hear the word of God from our very own Dr. Dennis W. Bishop, I have a few reminders and announcements to share. Mark your calendars. We will be celebrating our graduates during our annual College Day service on Sunday, June 12th. Register now for Babel Boot Camp 
ages five and above, July 21st through the 24th are the dates. Registration is $25 per camper, and the registration deadline is June 8th. The fees will cover all activities, supplies. Registration is accepted on a first come, first serve basis. To receive your registration packet, please request it by sending an email to youth at firstwalltown.org. Corporate Sunday School will continue to be offered via Zoom. The class will be conducted from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. each Sunday until further notice. You may also join us for a noonday Bible study each Wednesday virtually at 12 p.m. We thank you for your continued support of FWBC. It is important during these unprecedented times that we continue to contribute to our church home. We invite you to give. Visit our website at www.firstwatown.org and click the giving link. We are so happy to have you here at First Wall Town. Everybody is somebody and nobody is all but Christ. Be blessed. What can wash away my sin? Y'all sound good. What can make me whole again? Yes. Yeah. Magnify the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Magnify the one who's worthy of all the praise. Magnify the one who gives us the breath that we breathe right now. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks for he has given Jesus Christ, God's Son. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Come on, everybody, give him thanks. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Everybody sing. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks for He has given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Everybody open your mouth to the Holy One. Give thanks for He has given Jesus Christ, His Son. And now, and now, let the weak say, I Give him some thanks. Yeah. Give thanks. Oh, give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give thanks. One more time. Hallelujah. Give If you believe the presence of the Lord, all the 
over this place, let's give the Lord thanks. Come on, Zion, all over this place, give the Lord thanks. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures through all generations. Who wouldn't serve a God like us? We bless the name of the Lord. Blessed Jesus. Blessed Jesus. Blessed Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed Jesus. With my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise, with a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. Somebody bless the name of our God today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God with my hands lifted up and our mouths filled with praise. Father, let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. You are our strength and our redeemer. We sent your presence in here today and only you get the glory. Here we are once again with our elbows pressed against the window sills of heaven and we would see Jesus. Move now by your power and by your spirit. He'll set free and deliver in Jesus' name. Go ahead and bless God one more time real good in your own way. Bless him real good in your own way. Somebody just shout out and give somebody a great big God bless you today. Hallelujah. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. 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 With the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. One time with my hands lifted up. With my hands lifted up. And my mouth filled with praise. With the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will bless thee. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Woo! I will bless thee, O oh Lord. With the heart of I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Some of y'all sit down too fast. Go ahead and get back up and let's get ready for the word of God. Amen. Amen. Back to your feet. Let's get ready for the reading of the word. And thank God for his spirit in this place today. Y'all bless God for Elder Faye Bacon, who has led us in our worship today. Thank God for her today and for our minister of music, our drummer, bongo player, and all of you who have joined us in this worship experience. I sense God's presence in this place today. He's here. He is here, and we bless God for his presence today. Amen.
Let's go to Genesis chapter 5, verse 24, and I want to read just that one verse in conjunction with the series that we are doing, Impacting Generations with Truth. Impacting Generations with Truth. Amen? How many of y'all know his truth is still marching on? And how many of you know we ought to be proclaiming his truth every chance we get? Thank God for our missionaries today. This is the fifth Sunday, Family and Friends Day, and thank God for all of our missionaries. Now I'm going to challenge you in just a few minutes, right after we finish reading this passage of Scripture together. Uh, how many of y'all read Genesis 18 this week? Go ahead, don't be scared. Get your hands up high. How many of y'all read Genesis 18? You remember that was your home assignment? Was it Genesis 18? Okay, how many of y'all, how many of y'all didn't read it? All of you did, did how many of y'all didn't read it? All right, thank you for your honesty. Look at there. Well, I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and give the benediction and we can go home. What's the use of me teaching and preaching if you're not gonna get it? Because he says, How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall he preach except he be sent? And if we're not going to do what we're asked to do, what's the, what's the need of me doing it? I'm going to pray God give us a group that's going to get in here and going to do what he's asking us to do. See, we're looking for answers for our young, our generations. And God's giving us fresh revelation. Well, he's giving us fresh revelation and what? What was the other word I gave you last week? What is it? Fresh revelation and practical application. He, he's telling us what we need to do and what he wants us to do and what worked back then from the scriptures that I've been giving you and what's going to work now. But, but if we're not going to take that revelation and that practical application and apply it and use it and do it, then stop asking the question, what in the world are we going to do about this generation? If, if God's giving it to us and giving us answers and telling us what worked all the way back then, then and telling us that it will work right now. And then I ask how many of y'all studied your homework? How many of you did Genesis 18? And I see about six hands as best I could see. And I see a whole slew of hands that says, I, I ain't do it. I ain't do it. Maybe, maybe because you asked me. I, didn't do it. I don't. But, but listen, if and, and these are students of. So if we're not taking the practical application and the revelation, then please stop asking, what do we need to do about this generation? We're saying they are, they are off the chazane. They're off the hook. They have gone wild. And God says, I'm giving you practical application and fresh revelation so you won't have to keep asking the same thing. Just take what I'm giving you and, and share it and apply it. And, and he's saying it's going to work. Why, why wouldn't it work now if it worked way back then? And I'm going to be giving you some more today as God gives it to us. But thank you anyway for being honest and thank you for those who, who read it. Uh, I'm going to give you a pop quiz in a few minutes. And if you fail that, you need to give me $25 today <laughs> per person. <laughs> All right, let's read the passage of Scripture together in Genesis chapter 5. Are you there? All right, let's read together. Genesis 5, and I want to read just one verse, and that is verse 24, and then we will go from there. All right, let's read together. And Enoch walked with God and was not or no more because God took him. Some translations says God translated him. God removed him. God, he walked with God. And I'm going to tell you in just a few minutes, he walked with God in the same kind of society that we're walking in. It was no different then than it is now. And Enoch yet walked with God probably wondering some of the same things we're wondering as to why the generation and the society and the people around him 
were as they were, but it did not hinder his faithful walk with God. Go ahead and give somebody a great big God bless you again and you can be seated. Here's what I want to open you up with today. I want to open you up with this. And, and listen to the two words that I'm going to use because I'm going to, I'm going to put emphasis on two words. I want you to hear this real good. God had, H-A-D, emphasis on that word. God had a plan for how he wants every believer, every spirit-filled believer, every person that is naming the name of Christ, God had a plan for how he wants us to pass down our faith, our skills, our gifts, and so forth to the next generation. God had a plan. Somebody shout had. He had a plan. And let me say this in conjunction with that, God still has, H-A-S, a plan as to how he wants every one of us to pass down our faith to the next generation. Here's here's what I want to say to you very plainly. This plan that God had and still has is very much still valid. Trust me when I tell you the devil has not thwarted God's plan. He has not made God's plan null or void. He doesn't have the power to do that. We might give him the power and we may give him the place in some things, but the devil does not have the plan, the power to destroy God's plan. Things that were happening in generations back in Genesis, as we're going to look at in just a few minutes, still happening in our generations now, will be happening in generations to come. But I want to tell you that the plan of God, listen to this, is not obsolete. Neither is it void. Neither is it annulled. If God was saving in our generation... He is still saving right now. And if God is still saving right now, and he is, he's going to be saving for generations to come. As long as there remains seed, time, and harvest. (laughs) If we'll just sow the word of God, God's word And God's power is going to give the increase. Let me help us to know this morning that the devil has not, cannot, and will not ever destroy God's plan to redeem men and women. And he won't destroy it now. Look at what the word of God says to us. Look at this. God's plan is still valid. Each generation has the responsibility to bear witness before the next generation. And we are to bear witness according to Psalm 78 and 1 where we have been reading from and all the way down to verses 7 and verse 8 Every generation has the responsibility 
to bear witness to the next generation concerning God and his mighty deeds. How many of y'all are some witness bearers to the mighty deeds of God? Hallelujah. Glory to God. One of God's first and most prominent deeds is to save us from our sins. You can talk about miracles. You can talk about financial blessings. You can talk about health. You can talk about wealth. And all of that's good. Those are benefits from God. But the greatest and the most prominent blessing we will ever get from God is the fact that he saves us from our sins. He saves us from a burning hell. He writes our name in the Lamb Book of Life. And by grace, through faith, in Jesus Christ that is the greatest miracle you and I will ever receive if I don't ever see God heal another person if they're saved I know they're already healed and someday in glory they'll have new bodies and sickness will not be known ever again not even death itself and so the greatest miracle that you and I will ever experience is the miracle of salvation. And honey, if you can't talk about the mighty deed of God through saving you, then you need to find out whether or not you're really saved. We like to witness about health and we like to witness about prosperity and we like to witness about this and that. Honey, first of all, if you cannot witness to the saving grace of Jesus Christ in your life, then you need to find out whether or not you're really saved. That's one of the most mighty deeds that we can tell every generation, and that is of the saving grace of God. And some of us got saved at an early age. Some of us waited till later in life to get saved. But if we cannot testify and bear witness to the mighty deed of God for salvation, then we need to check ourselves. Another thing we need to be able to testify to the mighty deed of God is sanctification. How he has sanctified us through the truth. See, a lot of people just want to be saved. We love to talk about salvation and that's as far as we want to go. We need to be testifying and bearing witness to every generation of God's sanctification. And we are sanctified by the truth. It is the word of God that sets us apart from sin so that you can say the things I used to do, I don't do no more. And it is because I have been set apart by the truth of the word of God. And not do it up until you get too old not to be able to do it. Honey, you can testify of the mighty power of God when there are things you know you can still do, still do just as good, maybe even better, but have no desire to do it if it's not in the word and the will of God and causes us to sin against God. I don't want to do it because the word has set me apart from that. And then another mighty deed that we ought to be able to testify to is being filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Help me somebody. <laughs> Any spirit-filled believers in here today? Any folk been saved and got sanctified and now you are filled with the Holy Ghost and you don't mind letting anybody know you are filled with the Holy Ghost? The keeper. Woo! The comforter. Hallelujah. The life giver. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost. I tell folk oftentimes in my travel, don't you let that, don't you let that term Baptist on my bio fool you. We are spirit filled Baptists. Am I right about it? Any witnesses in here? Some folk when they announce the name First Wall Town Baptist, that Baptist makes a difference. No, it doesn't. You ought to be a spirit-filled Baptist. You ought to be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost and allowing God to do what he want to do in you. 
I tell folk everywhere I go, that term Baptist is just my station identification. I was filled with the Holy Ghost before I became a Baptist preacher. I tell them we'll speak in tongues in a minute. We'll lay hands on the sick in a minute. We'll cast out a demon in a minute. Honey, you got to be spirit fear. You got to learn to cast down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God through the power of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. I know we can sit around sometimes and look at the folk that don't shout and the folk that don't speak in tongue and the folk that don't run. Listen, that doesn't change those that are filled with the Spirit. You can go into Pentecostal churches and all of them aren't speaking in tongues and all of them aren't running and all of them. Honey, this is a personal relationship. We ought to be bearing witness to the next generation concerning God and what? His mighty deeds. You ought to be bearing witness that you're walking by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah, somebody. You ought to be bearing witness that I'm a demon slayer. I'm a devil destroyer. You ought to be bearing witness to the next generation that Jesus Christ is alive. Not has been, but is alive. You ought to be bearing witness to the next generation that I've seen God make a way out of no way. Any witnesses in here? Any witness bearers in here? Has God made a way out of no way to some of you all. Some of you all ought to be carrying power and authority that, the, that you ought not be shaken at the enemy. The enemy ought to be shaken because of you. Some of y'all walking in fear. You ought not be walking in fear. You ought to have the enemy fearing you. I had one of our ladies in this church to send me a text a few weeks ago, as she's done before. Text said, Pastor, I put you down as a reference for a job that I'm trying to get. And I tell young people this all the time. I tell adults this. I've told many adults this. I put you down as a reference for a job I'm trying to get. Some folk I've texted back when I, when I sensed when I sensed that that wasn't the job God wanted them to have. Some folk I've texted back up front, up front. And I said, I'll gladly give you a reference, but I'm sensing in my spirit that's not where God wants you to be right now. And I don't have a problem telling them that. Because I think it's the work of every one of us that are witnessing to the next generation to steer them in the right direction. Every job is not your job. And so whenever the, Lord, whenever the Lord is saying to me, whoa, I say to them, whoa. Yeah. But a lady texted me the other day, young lady texted me the other day, a week or two ago, Pastor, I put you down for a reference. I text back, I said, do you really want this job? Yes, sir, I really do. I said, then it's yours. Get ready, because you're getting ready to go to work. I've done that to several of them. But I only do it as I'm led of the Spirit to do it. And when, and, when the, and when the man called me to get the reference, I talked with him. I don't answer every call. But many times the Holy Spirit will lead me to answer calls that I would ignore because I don't recognize the number so they can leave a message and then I may call back. But oftentimes the Holy Spirit said, go ahead and catch that one right there. I mean, really, that's how God talks. Some of us can't hear him because we're so busy running our mouths. Be, sit down somewhere, be still, and be quiet and let the Holy Ghost talk to you. Holy Spirit said, catch that call right there. I didn't recognize the number, but I grabbed it. Man told me who he was. Told me why he was calling. Said, I'm calling to get a reference for so-and-so. This and that. And what do you have to say about him? I gave him a good reference. Because I've seen this person walk with the Lord. I've seen this young woman be faithful to God. 
I see her tithing. I see her giving. I see her faithful to God. I know she's filled with the spirit. I know she loved the Lord. I gave, I gave the reference that God would have me to give. He says, is there anything else you want to say about it? I said, I, I, said, I think I've said enough. She texts me back a few days later, Pastor, thank you. I got the job. <laughs> listen, listen. When that happens, when that happens, I don't do it. I told you so. Because <laughs> it's not about Dennis Bishop. When we learn to walk with God, listen to what, listen to what he's saying. So, I, listen, that person can bear witness of the mighty deed of God to the next generation. See, see, God's setting us up with some things in this day and time that we ought to be able to bear witness to the next generation. Because each generation has the responsibility. Listen to me. You and I have the responsibility to bear witness before the next generation. And listen to the generation below us. You've got the responsibility to get saved, get sanctified, get filled with the Holy Ghost. Not just looking at ministry as a position, but to look at where God has placed you for a call and a purpose. And even doing that, you need to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and bearing witness to the generation below you. That's what he's doing. While we're moving up, you need to be bearing witness to the generation that's coming up. Notice what happens here. We, we, we are to do, we are to do this. We are to bear witness before the next generation concerning God and his mighty deeds. And we are to do this so that the generation that comes after every other generation will not lose sight of God and not lose sight of God's glorious power. But instead, he admonishes us in Psalm 78 to help them to find their hope in God. Let me tell you real quick what causes generations to lose sight of their hope in God. It is oftentimes because the generation ahead of them start losing sight of the hope in God because we want to be like everybody else. We want to follow the pattern of everybody else. We want to present name brand everything without an anointing on it, but because it's name brand, and those spirits come in releasing other spirits. And the next thing you know is that the believers, I'm talking about even spirit feel, start conforming to the generation that is trying to present things without an anointing on it. And we say, well, it draws a crowd. Honey, if the Holy Spirit doesn't draw us, everything else we're using to draw a crowd or anything else, you better watch out. The Holy Spirit has to do the drawing. Scripture says no man can come to the Father except the Spirit, what? Draws them. You can have all of the gimmicks you want. Gimmicks that doesn't have anything like Christ on it. Gimmicks that doesn't have any kind of anointing on it. Gimmicks that doesn't have any word to go with it. Gimmicks that doesn't have any power attached to it from God. And when we start conforming and chasing after those things, 
we lose sight on our hope in him and the next generation sees us and they start going down that same road. Look at this. Look at this. G Genesis 5, 24 says, And Enoch walked with God and was not because God took him or translated him or took him home with him. <laughs> please, please keep this in mind. And, and we're getting ready to do a little history, so get ready. Yeah, set up. As the young folk would say, we would say pay attention. Young folk would say tighten up. Or young folk would say lock in. So y'all sit up, lock in, and let's do some history. <laughs> I, I want you to keep in mind in this own set. Keep, keep in mind that there are two separate figures in the Bible named Enoch. Two of them. And we're going to try to distinguish from what the scripture says and what history says and gives us the Enoch that he's talking about here. Two separate figures in the Bible. The first Enoch is the son of Cain. Now, how many of y'all know what Cain did? Cain did what? Killed his brother Abel. Killed him. And then when he was asked by God, where's your brother? What did he say? Am I my brother's keeper? You know as much as I do, you tell me where he is. <laughs> That's the first Enoch. He is the son of Cain. The second Enoch is the Enoch we're dealing with. The second Enoch was a descendant of Seth. Seth being the third son of Adam and great-grandfather of Noah. Now, without turning to that, you'll find that reference in the same fifth chapter, verses 22 through 29. As a matter of fact, just glance at it. Same fifth chapter, verses 22 through 29. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah. Is that the way yours read? Fifth chapter, verse 22. And it goes on down, and it goes on down, and it goes on down, and it goes on down through all those genealogies. Notice that in your reading time. That's another assignment for you. Fifth chapter of Genesis. Notice all of the genealogies that he gives here in verses 22 through 29. But the J source names these seven generations in the Adam to Cain line and places alongside them a three generation sequence. And that is in the Adam to Seth line. When you read that, you'll see all of that in that passage of scripture. I had to understand what he meant here when he says, Enoch walk with God. And I added this by saying, that walk was a faith full walk. So I went back and did the statement again, not to change the word of God. And Enoch walked faithfully with God. And because of his walk faithfully with God, 
he was not, and God translated him. Now, what was Enoch's faith? I had to question the text. What was Enoch's faith? Well, it was faith in the God who created all things. It was faith in God's promise. Listen to this. Because some of you all are sitting here today still holding a promise from God. And God is saying to every one of us, even though you haven't seen the fulfillment of it yet in the natural, just keep walking faithfully with me. And here's something else I hear the Lord saying. Some things in your life, in your home, with your children, with your grandchildren, seemingly is going to sometimes get worse. But God is saying, keep walking faithfully with me. Well, God, some stuff I've been trusting you for five years with it, and you had to keep walking faithfully with me. Somebody just shall walk faithfully. I ask you for a Rolls Royce. You hadn't given it to me yet, so I ain't going to tithe no more. Honey, my tithe is not predicated on whether or not he gives me a Rolls Royce or not. My tithe is predicated on the fact that it doesn't belong to me. It's God's and I'm going to do it faithfully. Because if he didn't give me a Rolls Royce, he gave me a 2,000 grand marquee that's still outrunning the Rolls Royce. I can go where I want to go. I can come back when I get ready. He keeps it running. He keeps it good. He keeps it going. And if it breaks down, he gets it fixed. Somebody just holler, I got a promise I'm holding on to. God is saying to some of us right now, just keep walking, how? Faithfully with me. Enoch's walk of faith was in the promise of a redeemer. Hear, hear what the word is saying. Enoch's walk of faith was in the promise that a redeemer is coming. Some of our walks of faith is in the promise that if God says it, he's going to do it. If he spoke it, he's going to bring it to pass. Now the heat might get turned up between when he spoke it and when he brings it to pass, but you just keep walking faithfully in the promise that God gave you. How many of y'all know God is a promise keeper? Honey, if he told you he's gonna save your sons and daughters, he's gonna do just that. If he said he's gonna bring your grandchildren in, he's gonna do just that. If he says he's gonna save your spouse, he's gonna do just that. If God really said it, he's gonna do it. If he say he's going to get your baby out of jail, he's going to do just that. Even if a crime got him in there or didn't get her in there, God said it, he's going to do it. The thing you got to do is keep walking faithfully in between his speaking and his bringing it to pass. Somebody shout hallelujah in this place today. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. I said glory to God. Enoch's walk of faith is that he believed God created all things and his walk of faith 
was in a coming redeemer. Now, remember back in Genesis 3.15, where God says, and I will put enmity between you and the woman when he was talking to the serpent there in the garden. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He's going to bruise your head and you're going to bruise his heel. Thousands of years later, did that promise not come to pass? Huh? Huh? Thousands of years later, here comes Jesus, <laughs> the promised redeemer. Glory to God. And in between the time God translated Enoch and the time he made that promise and he started believing that promise, honey, some stuff went down. But Enoch says, no matter what goes down, I'm going to keep walking faithfully in the promise that God is going to do it. Look at this. Look at this. When, when you read Genesis 3.15, this is the first announcement of the gospel. First announcement that was made concerning the gospel of Jesus Christ. God's promise of a redeemer was made in the garden. That's why sometimes you better come to the garden alone. You can't bring your entourage to the garden because your entourage sometimes doesn't hear what you hear and don't see what you see and can't believe what you believe. Whew. Let me tell some of y'all that's crying about having to walk alone sometime. You better come to the garden alone. And the voice I hear calling on my ear See, some things that God is promising you, you telling everybody else, and it starts interfering because you got to process 13 other people's hearing. That's why sometimes folk talk about, well, he, he's always by, I want to be by myself sometimes. You ought to want to be by yourself sometimes. Sometimes we're just surrounded with too many people. Sometimes we got to shake some folk off. Sometimes we got to leave some people where they are. Sometimes you got to walk with just you and God. And it's not a matter of being funny. Not a matter of you being self-righteous. Not a matter of you being conceited. Sometimes you and God alone need to talk and hear each other. And sometimes you may not have that. God just wants you to hear him. And you think every time you go, you've got to have an entourage. And some of them walking with you and ain't believing nothing you're talking about. Matter of fact, some of them walking with you and sometimes they're trying to mess up God's plan for you. A whole lot of folk you think are for you, they're not for you. They're waiting to see you fall. Some folk that don't walk with you pray for you the most. I've learned over the years, held, I've learned over the years that some folk that's walking with you don't believe the promise that God's given to you. Somebody shout in the atmosphere, walk with God. When you get what God wants you to get, then he'll bring folk alongside you. 
But then thank God he bring people that's going to support your vision and what God is giving you and what God is saying to you. And they'll walk in the same faith that you're walking in because you're going to start passing down your faith to the next one and to the next one. And generations will start walking because they're going to grab hold to something they've never had. And that is faith in God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I said, thank you, Holy Spirit. (laughs) Listen, listen. God's promise of a redeemer was made in the garden. Genesis 3.15. And I believe that the family heads, listen to this, in the line of Seth, Passed this promise down to their descendants. Cain's line passed some stuff down, but it was violence and murder (laughs) and rape and incest. Oh, you better read it. That's why I think y'all, 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 some of y'all better start thanking God that, 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 he, that he had some people to turn away from you instead of towards you. I tell some folk who, who have told me over the years, I was, I was thinking one time when I, left, when, I, when I left my church, I was thinking one time, I've had people to tell me this, I was thinking... I was thinking about coming over there joining y'all. They don't know when they walked off. I said, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I be saying to God sometimes, I'm glad it was just a thought. (laughs) And thank you for turning the thought. Some of those folk I knew. And everywhere they've been, it's been trouble. Yeah, some of those folk I knew. Everywhere they went. Every, every ministry they got involved in, every, every ministry they worked in, in churches where they had been, I, I knew some of them. It, it was trouble, gossip, peace breaking, truce bearers, not truth, truce. And so some of them say, I was thinking about coming up. Whew, thank you. I'd be like, I'll be like, God, I bless you. (laughs) Because sometimes we think swelling is of God. Sometimes it's an infection that's causing the swelling. read this scripture and a whole lot of stuff came from the line of Cain but I went back and looked at the line of Seth and from the line of Seth they passed down the promise to their descendants And one of those descendants is Enoch. And Enoch believed the promise. (laughs) What is God saying? If we don't get everybody in the next generation, just seek to get one. And that one in that generation is going to make an impact on another. And that one in that generation is going to make an impact on the next one. 
Because somebody is going to watch that one somebody that believes the promise and say, wow, it must be something to this. How, how, how How do you think every generation starts spiraling downward? Because they are hearing and believing something in the generation ahead of them. And when they start believing it and following it, they start pulling others in and the spiral downward gets started. Holy Spirit is saying to us today, if you don't get but one to believe and hope in me, you've accomplished Because they may be the one, Enoch, that's going to get others to believe in me. And where you may not have been able to win that generation, you won one, and they're going to convince so many others. Notice what happens here. Enoch believed the promise. He believed what? That God exists and that he would honor that promise. And I believe today that God's promise holds true right now. That he wants to redeem this generation And generations to come. Now, saints, people of God, when you stop believing that, then you're saying that God's word is void and null. When you start believing that we're losing the next generation, You're saying in God's promise to redeem has just become void. I sinned. You've sinned. We've all sinned and come short of his glory. But he redeemed me. He washed me of my sins. In the blood of the lamb, he redeemed me, and I believe he's going to redeem the next generation. When you get to the point that you started saying or start saying, I don't believe they are going to be redeemed. You're saying then that the promise is null and void. That wasn't the case with Enoch. And let me tell you something. It ain't going to be the case with me. I believe God is saving the next generation. And I believe that God is going to save the generation after them. I believe until Jesus Christ comes, generations are going to be redeemed. I believe God's going to redeem some gangbangers. I believe God is going to redeem some gang members. How many of y'all remember in here years ago when at the conclusion of the message, three young men walked down this aisle? And gave their life to Jesus Christ and got into the new convert, new members class. And a few Sundays later, they came in and laid all of their gang paraphernalia down on this altar and believed God for salvation and started testifying of the mighty deeds of God. 
let me tell y'all something today that the Holy Spirit dropped in my spirit. He says it ain't over yet. If we in this house would get saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost and stop looking at each other and stop downing each other and stop thinking it's a single woman or man's show, God says, I'll bring them in here. I'll take them over there. I'll bring them in and redeem them for my glory and for my honor. Somebody shout with me, it ain't over yet. The devil is a liar. God is still Lord to the glory of God the Father. I believe God is still redeeming gang members. I believe God is still redeeming tree climbers. How many of y'all was here last week? And I told you about a young group telling me what a tree climber was. They use the term now tree climber for getting high. But honey, I believe God's still redeeming some tree climbers. Matter of fact, I believe some of y'all got some tree climbers in your house and you don't even know they're climbing trees. You didn't even know what the term was. But honey, let me tell you what I believe. When we pray today, I believe God's going to send angels to your house. And I, listen, may not happen today. But somebody say, I'm going to hold on to the promise. Come on, come on. I'm going to hold on to the promise. Somebody say, I'm going to hold on to the promise. So, some, of, some of y'all got some tree climbers that's not even in your house. But they're your sons and daughters. You taught them everything you knew. You taught them the word of God. You kept them in church. You kept them under the word. Now some of them don't even want to go by nobody's church. But let me tell you what I believe. I'm coming into agreement with many of you all today that if it doesn't happen today, God's word, God's promise, God's word, God's promise is that he is going to redeem them. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm done. I'm not done, but I'm going to quit. I ain't done, but I'm going to stop right here. Oh, Enoch walked with God. Enoch walked with God. Enoch believed God. Enoch believed God. God is just waiting on somebody right now to just shout out, God, I believe you too. <laughs> I said, God's waiting on somebody right now to just shout out, God, I believe you too. I believe. I believe that God wants to redeem generations. And can I tell y'all something else before I leave this platform? I believe that God is redeeming generations. It's our unbelief that's sometimes hindering God from doing mighty deeds. It's our unbelief. Some of us are tying the hands of God with our unbelief. 
because we're focusing on the situation rather than trusting in the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. Honey, if God can save some of us, <laughs> and listen, don't you tell nobody, but if God can save some of us from what he saved some of us from, he can certainly save the next generation. And all of God's people shouted, Amen. Lord, we believe you. God, we believe you. Here's what I want you to do. And you don't have to say it loud if you don't want to. That's up to you. But if you don't mind saying it loud, you say it loud. But I want somebody to shout out your son, your daughter, your grandchild, your great-grandchild, your spouse, your friend, your neighbor. Just, just, just shout out, God, I believe you for. And you shout it out if you want to. If not, just let the four become a picture in your mind and say, God, I believe you for. I believe you, God. I believe you, God. I believe you, God. And between my believing you today and when you're going to do it, I'm going to walk faithful in that. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Now you can't believe him and staggering at the promise. You can't believe him and if you go home today and he's smoking more marijuana today than he smoked yesterday, you can't stagger at the promise. You got to look at all that he's smoking today and say, God, I still believe you. Honey, if he's got smoke hurling out from under the door, you got to say, I still believe you. Holy Spirit, have your way. <laughs> Jesus, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Destroy every yoke. Set every captive free in Jesus' name. Set us free in our faith. Set us free in our belief today. And then set captives free that are bound by demonic forces and demonic spirits in Jesus' name. I speak to you today as Jesus spoke to Zacchaeus when he said make haste and come down for today salvation is coming to your house somebody ought to be buying into that right today salvation is coming to your house and we bless you God we bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. I don't care how long they've been bound. Jesus said to Zacchaeus, make haste. Come on down. For today, salvation has come to your house. Holy Spirit, speak to those with mental issues and emotional issues speak to them right now let the power of the Holy Ghost overtake their minds today bring them to a saneness and a soundness in Jesus name do what Madison has not done yet do what only the Holy Spirit can do bring them to saneness and soundness and stability in Jesus name those that are being raised without fathers and mothers and keeps using that 
as a cloak of maliciousness. Father, help them with that right now. In Jesus' name. And Holy Spirit, we trust you. And we come into an agreement with you. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. In Jesus' name. Dry those tears. Don't you cry no more. Troubles will soon be over and joy is coming in the morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus, we love you, but help us to love you even more. And Enoch walked with God. faithfully and he held on to the promise if the Lord tarries I'll come back next week and I want to talk to you some more from this passage of scripture of his walk with God in the kind of society that he lived in the Holy Spirit is still giving fresh revelation he is still giving fresh revelation and practical application for some of us to know how to walk in this godless society and not lose our faith I, I like that even though I didn't get a chance to get to it today. But his walk of faith was in a godless society. Some of them have no, had no mind to, to be saved. So, some of them didn't want to hear the name of God. Didn't even believe in the name of God. And Enoch still walked by faith. Can I tell you this and I'm done. All indications of everything that Enoch saw was godless. And he could have said like some of us, I just don't believe it's going to get any better. But no, he kept walking faithfully with God with only a promise. And God says because of that, phew, come on up. <laughs> come on up. And he was translated and never tasted of death. Father, let the words of our mouths, meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. You are our strength and our redeemer. We count it done by faith in Jesus' name. Every head, Lord, for just a few minutes. And somebody today in this auditorium may want to believe God for salvation today if you're here in this auditorium you may want to believe God for salvation if that's you if that's you you God is speaking to today and you know that God is calling you to himself please don't leave this auditorium today without saying pastor I need Jesus in my life and if you are that person today that wants to be saved and give Christ your life, would you just lift that hand right now and say, Pastor, you, the Lord is speaking to me today. I want to be saved. I want to ask Christ to be my Savior. Some people I can't see way back there, so you all will have to be watch men and women on the wall. Lift that hand right now. Pastor, today I want to ask Christ to forgive me for my sins and save me for Jesus' sake. Would you lift that hand today? Is there one? I want to be saved. I came a sinner, but I want to leave here with a changed life today. And I believe that only Jesus Christ, the Redeemer, can redeem me. Would you lift that hand? 
I don't care where you've been, what you've done, what you're doing right now. Lift that hand high in there. I want to be saved. Is there one? Is there somebody here today that's a backslide? I want to renew your fellowship with the Lord. Would you lift that hand now? We're getting ready to pray, and we want to certainly pray for you and with you today. If you are a backslider, get that hand up in there. Pastor, I want to be, I want to be renewed. I want, to, I want to be restored. I want to restore my fellowship with Jesus. I want to live my life for him as he lives his life through me. Get that hand high up in there now. If that's you, we're getting ready to pray. Hallelujah. Anybody want a closer walk with God? Pastor, just pray that my relationship with Jesus, I'm already saved. I just want to get closer to him. Pray that my relationship with him will be strengthened, that I'll get a hunger and thirst. God bless you. I'll get a hunger and thirst for the word. God bless you back there. I'll get a hunger and thirst for the word and ask God to give me that hunger so that I'll study his word more. I'll pray more. I'll walk more in fellowship with him. I'll walk more in my faith, asking him to increase my faith. If that's you, go ahead and join these others and get that hand up and stand to your feet right now. We're getting ready to pray. We're getting ready to pray. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Pastor, pray with me. You and others, pray with me today. I want to trust God more. Somebody's carrying a burden right now. Somebody left home this morning, came in this auditorium. You're carrying a burden today. A burden for your loved one, a burden upon yourself. Would you just stand with us now? Pastor, pray, pray with me today that this burden, I'll lay it at the feet of Jesus and trust him even more. Would you stand if you wanna, want us to just join you in that prayer right now? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'm carrying something today that I, that I need help with just laying it at the feet of Jesus and asking the Lord to help me with it today. If there's another, go ahead and get up. Stand on your feet right now. And you're standing. God bless you. You're standing. God bless you. God bless you. You're standing. It's saying to God, that's me, Lord. I need your help right now. Go ahead and stand up if there's another. Pastor, I need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I know I'm saved, but I've never asked Jesus to fill me with the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and stand up now. I need God's Holy Spirit today in my life and in my heart. Go ahead and get up. And we're going to pray that God fills you today with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead and get up. I'm still waiting. Get up. Get up. If that's you, get up. Anybody need healing today? We're going to take all this before God. I need healing in my body, healing, healing in my mind. Go ahead and get up. Healing, yeah, God bless you. Healing, yeah, yeah, we're standing with you. Hallelujah. On the promises of God, standing, standing, standing. Anybody else standing on the promises of Christ, my Savior? Stand, God bless you. God bless you. Standing, standing on the promise. Softly, softly, Father, here we are in Jesus' name. And God, I'm thankful for the privilege that we have to join with so many believing people of God today. God, we're thankful that we see your word in action, that one chase a thousand, two put 10,000 to the flight. Standing on your word that where there's two touching and agreeing upon the same thing on earth, that you are bringing it to pass. Lord, we're thankful that we're standing with so many believers today and we're all standing in agreement.
for every one of these, including ourselves, that is standing right now for answers from you, for miracles from you, for mighty deeds from you, for transformations from you, for healings from you for lightening burdens and lifting loads right now and even some that are standing for answers and direction and instructions and we thank you for it right now and Jesus while we're in agreement together we're saying thank you because we believe that you are doing it and we're giving you glory now and honor and praise and calling it done in Jesus name be set free today in Jesus name be made whole in Jesus name be healed today in Jesus name be transformed today in Jesus name and we thank you for it right now and we give you glory and honor and it is so and we say amen and you bless God in your own way open your mouth and bless him in your own way don't let just the open your mouth and tell him thank you Jesus God I believe you God I trust you God I believe you I take you at your word and I thank you now in Jesus name while you're still standing somebody may be without a church home you may come by letter candidate for baptism on Christian experience, may come by reinstatement. If you're here without a church home today, would you come? Would you come? Step out in the aisle nearest you. If you're here without a church home, come to the center aisle. If you're coming today, say, Pastor, I'm coming here. I want to be, come a partaker of this ministry here at FWBC. Would you step out in this center aisle right now? As we sing the last chorus again, standing, standing, stand. Is that one today? Standing on the prop, says the Christ, I say. Is that one? Stand. Let a candidate for baptism, Christian experience. We just step in this middle aisle. On the promises, I am standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. I am standing on the promises of God. Go ahead and bless the Lord and thank God for his word today. Where's Mother Payne? Okay, all right. She's coming. She's going to talk to you for just a few minutes about Bible Boot Camp. And right after that, get your tithes and offerings ready. We're going to pray over you as you bless the kingdom of God today and bless this ministry through tithes and offerings. And then we will pronounce God's benediction upon you. God bless you. Very briefly, I want to talk to you about Bible Boot Camp. Uh, that is happening this year, July 21st through the 24th. And the registration is now open on the, we on the church website. You can go on there and uh, fill out your application for your child. And usually we have anywhere from 50 to 75 children that will participate. They have a great time. And this is a Bible teaching uh, event there are arts and crafts, field trips, they get t-shirts made, and they get gifts back at the end of the session. Uh, we have the camp meals, they serve breakfast, they serve lunch every day, and they just have a great time. The children usually are very enthusiastic, and you know if you have a child in the age group of the boot camp, they need to be here. They need to partake. I remember a long time ago, parents used to select the, the things that they wanted their children to attend. 
and they would tell them, you know, you're going to go to this camp or you're going to go to vacation Bible school. And they didn't give them as much choices back then. But you know, when we got grown, we didn't have to have parents to give us the choices. We were then able to make the choice and choose Jesus, choose the things that we were taught. So I encourage all of you parents to get your children in any uh, organization that's teaching the Word of God. You will not be disappointed. And we thank God for it. There are many things that uh, they learn and do, and they have a lot of fun. Now, our budget is $500, but as you know, that does not cover everything that we need to do as far as bus transportation, arts and supplies, uh, feeding the children. There's a lot left to be done. So therefore, we are asking our church family to sow into this ministry. The, what you want to sow is up to you. And you may not have a child in it, but you must remember all the children are our children. And whether you have a child or not, feel free to sow into this ministry, whatever God lays on your heart. Now, if you want to write a check for it, you can make the check out to First Walltown Baptist Church. Just earmark it for Bible Boot Camp, and you can drop it in the basket on your way out. But we thank you for your giving, and please keep the Bible Boot Camp in prayer. Our coordinator is Minister Tamara Moore. She does an awesome job in setting this up. And we thank God for it. So whatever the Lord puts on your heart to sow, please do so. Thank you. Bible Boot Camp, it's been going on here for years. We've had it here for years. And as she just said, we want to thank Minister Moore and all of those that work with Minister Moore in the past years, we have sponsored children, so sponsorships are available where you can sponsor a child or two, maybe three, for those that are not able to pay and able to go. It's a very minimum fee, as Sister Payne just stated, and you'll hear about it again next Sunday. But uh, please, ma'am, please, sir, as this is one of the, the most active uh, ministries during the summer with our youth and young people. So let's buy into it again. It's been a blessing to our children, even the field trip that they take. And so uh, thank God for all of those workers and feel free, those of you that can and will, sponsor a child and uh, let's help with the Bible boot camp this year. Second Sunday in June, if I'm right, is our annual college day service where we'll be recognizing our graduates on the second Sunday, as we have done for many, many years now. And I do know some of them are going to be graduating on that day, but we still want to recognize them, we'll recognize them, uh, talk to you about what colleges they are planning to attend. We will speak over them, pray over them, support them in whatever way we can. Uh, for 19 years, we have visited college students uh, wherever they were, wherever they are. Because of the pandemic, it slowed us down. But thank God, the momentum has not picked up to where it was before the pandemic. But we're getting geared up again uh, as I'm getting younger to do it in parts now. May do half the first uh, semester that they're in school and then do the second half however we do it but we're planning to uh, get back out we saw a few this past year in our travel but second Sunday is our annual college day so please plan to be here and invite somebody to come with you father we thank you now for the gifts and for the givers bless these tithes and offerings as only you can but bless the giver today give back 100 fold plus let there be no lack in their homes, in their houses, in their finances. Let there be no lack as we give unto you. We trust you as you have done for so long, not matching us dollar for dollar, but meeting every one of our needs as only you can and as only you have, even needs of healing and needs of peace and needs of joy. Bless the giver and the gift today. 
in Jesus' name. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and keep giving you his shalom. May he bless you in your basket, your field, your store, your barn. Bless you down sitting, up rising, going out, coming in. Bless your seed and your seed's seed from this time forth and even forevermore. May he grant unto you traveling grace and mercies and bless all of those who are on the highways that are traveling back home from this weekend. Give them grace in Jesus' name. From my family and myself to all of you, we love you and God be with you. And you give it back to me and my family in Jesus' name. Amen. If you were blessed by today's message and have decided to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, or you want to be reconciled in your relationship with the Lord, please feel free to contact us by either sending a message through Facebook or going to our website, firstwalltown.org. You will find contact information on the link in the upper right-hand corner. Be blessed.